Okay, all praise to the Most High. So tonight's topic, tonight's topic is called trust in the Lord. That's tonight's topic. Trust in the Lord. All right, that is tonight's topic. Let's open up with the Book of Jeremiah, chapter seventeen, verse seven. Jeremiah seventeen, verse seven. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7. Mm. Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord, and whose hope is the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. Read that again, verse 7. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7. Mm. Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. He says, Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord. Okay. And whose, whose hope the Lord is. So your hope must be in the Lord. Your trust must be upon the Lord. Because when you look at what's happening in the country right now, our people don't trust in the Mosai. They trust in the government because the government is their mother. You understand? They put their trust in men. They don't put their trust in the Lord. You understand? Everything that is happening upon this earth, the Heavenly Father is, has control over it. Our job is to keep the commandments. That's what the Lord wants. You understand? Watch this. Let me show you what our people do. I'm just going to touch on what's going on this day. Okay? The looting, all of the burning of the buildings and malls. I want to show you what is the real problem behind this behavior. Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah, chapter 30. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse... Start at verse 9. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 9. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 9. Read. That this is a rebellious people. Mm -hmm. Lying children. Read. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. You see what the Lord is saying about us, our people, the 12 tribes of Israel, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. He says this is a what? That this is a rebellious people. This is a rebellious people. He says we are a rebellious people. We hate law and order as a nation. Read on. Lying children. Lying children. We don't like to take responsibility for our actions. He says we lie. Read. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Children that will not hear the laws of God. That's the problem with us. This is the nation of Israel right here. Jump down to verse 12. Watch this. Verse 12. Come on. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, mm -hmm. because ye despise this word. Because ye what? Trust, because ye despise this word. The Lord is saying, because we despise this word. We hate law, because the Bible is a book of law and order. And as a people, we hate law and order. That's why we hate the police. Because if you take the police out of the black community, let me tell you what will happen. The black woman will get raped Guess what? And crime will be rampant in the community. Why? Because we don't know how to police ourselves. If the police is to be taken out of the equation, the black woman will get raped, you understand? And black men will, will what? Will feel, will, they, will, they will end up, they will kill, they will kill one another. The black woman will get raped and the black men and the, the black men will kill one another. They will steal from one another. They will invade one another. You understand? That's what they will do. Because there's no order and the children will be left unprotected. That's exactly what will happen because we don't have the laws of God to be able to police our community, to set the order in the community, to teach the young men. You understand? For the women to be in order to teach their children to protect and guard the house. You understand? We don't do that. That's why the Most High God gave us laws. And the Lord says what? Read verse 12 again. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 12. Read. For thus saith the Holy One of Israel, mm -hmm. because ye despise this word, read, and trust in oppression, and trust and in oppression. So as a people, we trust in oppression. We, what is the oppression that we trust upon? Hold this. Give me Lamentations 4. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 17. I'm going to show you what, what oppression that Isaiah is making reference to. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 17. Watch this. Lamentations chapter 4 verse 17. 
Read. As for us, our eyes have yet, as yet failed for our vain help. Read. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. You see what, you see what the Lord is saying? So the oppression that we trust upon, today we call it politics. You understand? We have watched for a nation that could not save us. There are people, they are looking to the government to deliver them out of the oppression that we're in. That's not going to happen. The reason why we are at the bottom, the reason why we are poor, the reason why we have broken families is because we broke the laws of God. As a punishment and a judgment, the law says, okay, you're going into slavery. You're going to be colonized. You're going to be under the heavy system of apartheid. You understand? That is what's going to happen to you until you return back to me. But our people still don't get it. They will do all the gymnastics that you see in, in the news just so that they don't have to submit and humble down to the laws of God. You see that thing? This is the mind of the, ne the Negro. You see the mind of the Negro? Listen, we are sick, okay? We are sick as a people. We need the laws of God to bring forth that healing. Read again, verse 17. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 17. As for us, our eyes as yet failed for our vain help. Mm -hmm. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. Now watch this. Jump up to verse 13. Verse 13. Read. For the sins of her prophets and the iniquities of her priests that have mm -hmm. shed the blood of the just in the midst of her. Read verse 13 again. You are in the matrix. Verse 13 one more again. Lamentations chapter 4 verse 13. Read. For the sins of her prophets and the iniquities of her priests that have shed the blood of the just in the midst of her. Because that's why now you see you, 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 you are hearing the people that have been injured and the people that have been killed already because of these what? Because of these uh, riots and the lootings and the burning of buildings. Okay? Watch this. Next verse. Come on. They have wandered as blind men in the streets. They have done what? They have wandered as blind men in the streets. He says, as a people, we have wandered as blind men in the streets. Isn't that what you are seeing now? Everybody is confused and everybody has a different agenda why they are there. Because the news says, no, they are doing it because of Zuma. You understand? That's what the news says. That's what they say, no, they are doing it in the name of Sholozi. But if they are doing it in the name of Umsholozi, why are they stealing? Why are they looting? Why are they burning down buildings in the name of Umsholozi? Read again, verse 14. Lamentations chapter 4 is 14. Read. They wandered as blind men in the streets. Because as a people, because we trust in oppression, we despise the word of the Mosai, the Lord is saying we will be wandering as blind men in the streets. Both men and women just wandering. They don't know why they are doing what they are doing. You understand? Everybody has a different reason why they are out there destroying property. You see what I'm saying? Read. They have polluted themselves with blood. They polluted themselves. So what they are doing, they are not polluting the government. They are polluting themselves. Okay? You mean you are destroying your own self. That's what the Lord is saying. Read. So that men could not touch their garments. Minimum, nobody can tell them what to do. That's what he's saying. That so no man cannot touch their garments. Nobody can tell them what to do. Watch this. Give me the book of Acts now. Give me Acts chapter 13. Okay, because during the time of the, the Acts of the Apostles, similar things was going on. You understand? Watch this. Let me see. Let me see. Because I'm using a different Bible. Let me go to the normal one that I always use. Okay. Let me not confuse myself. Watch this. Give me Acts chapter 19, verse 32. Watch this. Acts 19, verse 32. You know what? Start of verse 29. Acts 19, verse 29. Let me show you something. Watch this. Acts chapter 19. Verse 29. Acts chapter 19, verse 29. And the mm -hmm. whole city was filled with confusion. The whole city was filled with confusion. You understand? That is what you are seeing now in the Cassis, in Piramarisbek, in Jovek. You understand? Alexander and so forth. 
the whole city is just filled with confusion, right? Come on. And having caught Gaius and Aristarchus. One of the apostles. Uh -huh, come on. Men of Macedonia. Paul's companions in travel. They rushed with one accord into the theater. They rushed into one accord into the theater because guess what? They didn't, hear, they didn't want to hear the voice of reason. Because what was the apostles there for? The apostles was there to teach the people to return back to the laws of God. To keep the commandments in the faith of Christ. They didn't want to hear that. That's why the city was filled with confusion because what was the prophets bringing? They were bringing law and order so that the communities can be in order. Now watch this. Jump down to verse 32 now. Let me show you the, the reason why the city was filled with confusion. This is the reason right here. Read verse 32. Verse 32. Mm -hmm. Some therefore cried one thing and some another. Come on. For the assembly was confused. The assembly was confused. So one people was crying for one thing, another one was crying for something else. One was saying, no, jobs. Another one was saying, no, Misholozi must be released. You see what I'm saying? Another one was saying, no, we're hungry, so on and so forth. Another one said, no, the government don't care about us. Everybody's coming there with a different agenda. Read verse 32 again. Acts chapter 19, verse 32. Read. Some therefore cried one thing mm -hmm. and some another. Come on. For the assembly was confused. The whole assembly was confused, meaning that's why it says the whole city was confused. Because if you look at, at the Piram, in, in Piramarisbek, you look at the, the mall that was being looted, right? The majority of the people, guess what they was looting? They was looting booze, ecologo, beer. The majority of the people were flogging to the liquor store. Okay, read. And the more part knew not wherefore they were come together. You see what he's saying? He says, the more part knew not, wherefore they were come together. Meaning most people, some of them didn't even know why they are there. That's what the Lord is saying. The same thing that was happening back then during the Acts of the Apostles is happening today because the Acts of the Apostles are continuing. You understand? So guess what? What happened back then is happening today. Why? Because the people didn't trust upon the Lord. Because at this point, what was the... What, what, what was the, the idol that they were worshipping? There was an idol that was worshipping. Jump up to verse 27. Let me show you the reason why the people, the city was full with, filled with confusion. Because the people in Ephesus, they did not put their trust in the Lord. Read verse 27 now. Watch this. Acts chapter 19 verse 27. Uh -huh. So that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised mm -hmm. and her magnificence should be destroyed. Read. Whom all Asia and the world worshipeth. Whom all Asia and the world worshipeth. They worshipped the goddess Diana. You understand? Diana, which is Ashtoreth, which is Isis, Semiramis. You see that thing? Read. Watch this. Verse 28. And when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Because they were exalting Diana instead of worshipping the Mosai, they were worshipping this goddess right here. They were worshipping this woman. This woman was their god. Guess what today our people, their god is? Their god is the government. That's who they worship. You understand? That's who they worship. That's why if you read the book of Samuel, when Saul was being the, was, was said to be the king, the Lord didn't say, no, Saul must be took the, take the throne. The people forced Samuel to choose a man that was going to sit on the throne, and Saul was chosen. You see that thing? But that was not the Lord, that was not the man that was after the Most High God's heart. Likewise, today is the same thing. The people they trust upon, they put their trust in men, not in the Heavenly Father. And that is what, what was going on right here. Now jump down to verse 34. Remember, when the apostles was teaching, they were saying, great is Diana of the Ephesians. They were, they were shouting this thing at one voice. Now read verse 34 now. Watch this. Verse 34. Mm -hmm. But when they knew that he was a Jew, read. all with one voice about the space of two hours cried out, read. great is Diana of the Ephesians. So could you imagine... 
a multitude of people, the whole city crying out for the space of two hours, saying, great is Diana of the Ephesians. Great is Diana of the Ephesians for the space of two hours. Guess what? Was it two hours what we are actually watching on the news? No. It says it's been going on since the morning. You understand? They've been uproars all over the country. It wasn't for two hours. Yeah, it was two hours. But today, it wasn't two hours. The whole day, this has been going on. Even yesterday, this has been going on. You see that thing? So what it was back then, today is escalated. You understand? Why? Because the people put their trust in what? They put their trust in men. So now when the, that, the, the men that they put their trust in does not deliver what they say, no, but we voted. No, but we did this. Guess what the people do? They take to the streets. You see that? Because they put their trust in men. Now watch this. Give me that in um, Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah 17 and verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 5. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man. You see that thing? And Cursed be, hold on. Cursed be the man that trusted in man. You see, that's why our people are confused. They are filled with confusion because they put their trust in man. That's why today's topic, tonight's topic is trust in the Lord. Our people don't trust in the Lord. They trust in man. That's why now their thought process is messed up. Read again verse 4, verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5. Come on. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man. That trusteth in man mm -hmm. right? and maketh flesh his arm. And whose heart departeth from the Lord? Because our people as a nation, we have departed from the most high God. That's why we join politics, we join Christianity, religion, some become Muslims, you understand? Seven day disadvantage, all of these different philosophies, our people have joined that. That's how they departed from the Lord. Because the laws, the most high God give you clear instructions of what you must do. Thou shalt worship no other gods. Politics is we are worshiping other gods because you're putting your trust in men. You understand? So that's why it says, cursed be the man that trusted in men. As a people, listen, the most high God never wanted us to have a president. No, we have one king. That's Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah. When our people requested somebody to be on the throne, there was always a problem. You understand? Watch this. Watch this. Give me Give me the book of, uh, give me Samuel real quick, okay? Because I want to show you what happens in the, what, what, what happened in the past. Because our people don't learn, okay? First Samuel chapter 8. First Samuel chapter 8 verse 1. I'm going to take you through back into history. Because we don't, we don't learn. So we have to return back to see the things that are written aforetime that we may be able to learn and not repeat the same mistakes. First Kings 8 verse 1. Here's what happened when we put our trust in men. Watch this. Read it. First Samuel chapter 8, verse 1. Come on. And it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. So Samuel made his sons judges over Israel, right? Watch this. Keep going. Now read verse 5 now. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. And said unto him, Behold, Thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Read. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. You see what they said to Samuel? He says, now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. So what was they doing? They were envying the, how the other nations move. They say, we want to be just like them. Give me that in Proverbs 3.31. You know what? Give me that in 2 Maccabees 4. I think this is a better one. Okay. Second Maccabees chapter 4, verse 16. Start at verse 15. Second Maccabees chapter 4, verse 15. Second Maccabees chapter 4, verse 15. Read. Not sitting by the honors of their fathers, mm -hmm. but liking the glory of the Grecians, best of all. You see what the, you see, you see what we did during the time of the Greeks? It says we didn't set after the, four, the honors of our forefathers, meaning Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Joshua, Moses, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, we didn't fall after the footsteps of our forefathers. 
He says, but like in the glory of the Grecians, best of all. What was the glory of the Grecians that we liked? Watch this. Hold this. Give me First Maccabees 1. First Maccabees 1 verse 41. Let me show you the glory of the Grecians that we chose instead of walking after the footsteps of our forefathers, Abraham, and so forth. First Maccabees 1 verse 41. Read that. First Maccabees chapter 1 verse 41. Come on. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. So King Antiochus was a Greek. He came out of the Seleucid Empire. So he said, listen, all should be one people. This is during the time of the Greeks, the Greeks in Athens. This is the birth of democracy right here. Because democracy started in Greece. You understand? So that's the glory of the Grecians that we chose, like we are doing today, choosing politics instead of following after the footsteps of our forefathers whose heart was after the Most High, to rule all nations on earth instead of fighting for equality. We're not equal. So why are we going out there fighting? No, we are want to be equal. No, we were not born to be equal on this earth. We we're born to rule all nations on earth. You understand? Ray. Verse 42. Mm -hmm. And everyone should leave his laws. Read. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. So the heathens agreed according to the commandment of the king. The heathens talk about the other nations. Today would be your Japanese, your Chinese, your Indians, your Arabs, white people. You understand? So on and so forth. Hamites and so forth. Okay, come on. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion. You see that thing? It says many also of the Israelites consented, meaning what? We agreed to the religion of the Greeks. What was the religion of the Greeks? Politics. Politics is a religion of the Greeks, white people. You see that thing? So when you see our people flocking after politics, you know, me, I'm EFF, me, I'm ANC, me, I'm this, because they have no idea where politics come from. Politics, Moses, when he went to the mount, Moses never re received politics. He never received none of that. He received law, law, statutes, and commandments, which today we call the Bible. That's our constitution. You understand? How to order ourselves, get our families together, how to teach and raise our children, and how to rule the earth. It's all written in the Bible, the books of our forefathers that the Lord gave unto them to give unto us, the children this day. But guess what they did? Read verse 43 again. First Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 43. Read. Hey, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion. Read. And sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. We sacrifice unto idols and profane the Sabbath. How do we say, how do our people today sacrifice unto idols? They vote. Yes, they vote because they are sacrificed unto the idol. Who's the idol? The president is the idol. The minister is the idol. You understand? The parliament, the minister of parliament, that's their idol. The mayor, that is their idol. They've got an idol in front of them. That's how they sacrifice, because they pledge allegiance to this thing. You understand? How long have our people been voting? Look at our conditions. We are worse than we've ever been ever before in history. But our people still don't get it. Our people are still bugged out. Our people are still dumb as hell. They don't see that this is not working. They still don't see it, because guess what? They are filled with confusion. You understand? With madness. That's why people are flocking the street, acting like blind men, like the Lord says. Go back to 2 Maccabees now. Chapter 4, verse 15 again. 2 Maccabees, chapter 4, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Not sitting by the honors of their fathers, Read. but liking the glory of the Grecians, best of all. Politics. Politics. Read. By reason whereof, so calamity came upon them. Stop right there. So calamity. You see the so calamity that is coming upon our people now? Look at our people. Look at since just look at since the corona started. Our people, so calamity has come upon our people. Our people, they are they've lost their jobs. You understand? They, their families are broken. Their children are committing adultery, committing abortions. That's what's going on. Young men killing one another. That is the so calamity that has come upon us. You understand? Not forgetting slavery, apartheid, you understand? Living in the ghettos, in poverty. That is so calamity. That's the judgment of the Mosai. 
the Lord is judging us. Because guess what? We still don't want to acknowledge that he is our king. He is the Lord of God, is the God of Israel and none else. We still don't want to acknowledge him. That's why we behave the way we do. But when judgment comes, we cry to the government because that's our God. That's why the Lord is not stopping to jack us up. He's still, listen, he's still unleashing the coronavirus upon, our, our, upon us. And it's not stopping. The angel still has the sword out to kill many people as possible in Jerusalem because we are Jerusalem. You understand? It's not enough yet. That's why our people, the numbers keep going up. Okay? Because we still don't get it. Keep going. Come on. Verse 16. By reason well, so calamity came upon them. Come on. For they had them to be their enemies and avengers. You see that thing? Whose custom so, they followed so earnestly. So it says, for they had them to be their enemies and avengers. Because these people, they are our enemies and they are avenging us. The Lord is using them to avenge us. You understand? Because we broke his laws. So he's using these nations to smite Israel. Okay? Read. Whose customs? Whose, whose custom they followed so earnestly. Come on. And unto whom they desired to be like in all things. You see what he's saying? He says, whose customs, meaning the cust we're following the customs of the white man, which is politics, that's their religion. You understand? Politics is the white man's religion. Understand that? So politics, politics is the white man's religion, which the black man has adopted and taught his kids. You understand? Christianity is another religion of the white man, which the white man has taught, which the black man has adopted and taught his kids and still teaching his children. So politics, Christianity, two sides of the same demonic coin. Are people still tossing that coin? You see that? So now it says, whose customs they followed so earnestly and unto whom they desire to be like in all things. We just want to be like them. We do the things that they do. And when those things don't work for us, guess what we do? We take to the streets. Because we have not learned nothing as a people. The reason why we were brought here to South Africa, we came here running, is because the Lord brought us here to do what? To repent in this land, to get ourselves together. You understand? For the second coming of the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Because he can crack the sky at any time. You understand? Go back to 1 Samuel now. Chapter 8, verse 5. 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 5. Mm -hmm. And said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. So now they are, they, they are forcing Samuel to choose a king to set over them. That's today the president, they want to vote. No, I'm going to vote for Malema because it's such and such. Me, I still want Zuma to come back. Me, I like, I, I like Cyril Ramaphosa, idols. They're breaking the first commandment. Thou shall have no other gods before me. Our people don't want to, they don't care about that. Read verse 6. But the thing displeased Samuel mm -hmm. when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. You see what Samuel did? Samuel prayed unto the Lord because he understood that he understood that the Most High God is our counselor. The Most High God is our king. He, that, the way we move, we're supposed to move according to what is written in this book. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Samuel, mm -hmm. Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee. Read. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. You see that thing? So, you see, that's the key, right? The key, in, the key is in verse 7. It says, Well, Samuel went to the Mosai and he prayed to the Lord. The Lord said to Samuel, Listen, listen to them. But what, you wanna, what, 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 what I want to show you is that these people have not rejected you, Samuel. They've rejected me. They've rejected me that I should not rule over them. Thou, so when our people vote, sacrifice unto these idols, you understand? They, what are they saying in the spirit? They are saying, we don't want the heavenly father to rule over us. That's what they are saying. You see that thing? 
It says that I should not reign over them. Watch this. Give me Luke 19, 27. Let's see what happens when we choose, when we make, the, we make those decisions to forsake the Lord so we can go after other gods. This is what the Lord does. Luke chapter 19, verse 27. Read it. Luke chapter 19, verse 27. Mm -hmm. But those mine enemies. Those my what? With but those mine enemies. But those mine enemies. Those mine enemies. You see what God is calling them? Those that want to go after other gods. You understand? So set as a king over us. God is calling them his enemies. This is God's enemies right here. So our people going after politics, Christianity and all of that, they are making themselves to be the, they are making themselves an enemy to God. That's what they are doing. Okay, read. But those mine enemies, mm -hmm. which would not that I should reign over them. That would not, bring that, hither, not that I should, hold on. Is whoa, 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 read that verse again for me. Luke chapter 19, verse 27. Read. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them. Come on. Bring hither and slay them before me. You see what Christ is saying? This is Christ speaking right here. It says, but those my enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither, meaning bring them here, and slay them before them before me. He says, put them to death. That's why people are dropping dead now. You understand? That's why people are dropping dead. You understand? Corona is really killing our people. Why? Because they don't want the Lord to rule over them. Because how do you make? How do you? How do you make sure that the Lord rules over you? Guess what you do? You keep the commandments. Don't buy on the Sabbath. Don't sell on the Sabbath. Don't cook on the Sabbath. Put fringes on your clothes. Grow a beard as a man. You understand? Okay? Don't be sleeping around. Get married. You understand? You see, these are some of the laws that we're breaking. Thou shalt not steal. Stop stealing. Okay? Thou shalt not covet. Don't be covetous. That's what the Lord is looking for. The most that God is looking for that thing. He wants us to humble down and obey what is written. But our people, they still don't want to do that thing. Okay? Now, let's go back. 1 Samuel 8, verse 7 again. First Samuel, chapter 8, verse 7. And the Lord said unto Samuel, mm -hmm. Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. Come on, next verse. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of, the, out of Egypt, even unto this day. Even unto this day. Unto this meaning up to 2021. Up to this very day, 2021. From the time that the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand, and to this very day, 2021, we have not want, we did not want to keep God's commandments. That's why the Lord says, this is a rebellious children, lying children, children that will not hear the laws of God. We are still those same generation that left Egypt. Read. Wherewith they have forsaken me uh -huh. and, and served other gods, so do they also unto thee. You see what we've done? The Lord says, wherein they have forsaken me. How did we forsake the Lord? We served other gods, presidents, ministers, you understand? Political leaders and political parties. Those are the idols we worship. That's what the Lord is saying. He says, so he says, they have forsaken me and served other gods. So do they also unto thee. Jump down to verse 18 now. Watch this. Because of your king, which ye shall okay. have chosen you. No, no, we didn't. Uh, you, are, you are breaking. Read verse 18 again. First Samuel chapter 8, verse 18. And ye shall cry out in that day, because of your king, which ye shall have chosen you. Mm -hmm. And the Lord will not hear you in that day. You see, that's what's going on right now. That's why now our people are crying. Our people, they're saying, we don't have jobs. We, where are we, we don't know, we don't know where we're going to get the next meal. You see that thing? 
and now corona is on the loose we're afraid whether we're going to lose our houses our our jobs and all some people have already lost their jobs why because you see what the lord is saying it says he shall cry out in that day 2021 aren't our people crying yes our people is crying today it says you shall cry out in that day because of your king which he shall have chosen you which king have our people chose no we want zuma no, we want ANC. No, we want Ace Mahashule. Hey, what? Let's, that's your king that you've chosen. The Lord said, okay, you're going to cry now. You're going to cry and there's not going to be anything that is going to be done for you. But we still don't learn. Our people don't learn nothing. You understand? It says, and the Lord will not hear you in that day. The most I don't hear nothing. You, you see what the Lord is doing right now? The Lord is laughing at the problems. He is laughing at us now. Right now, as we are crying to the Lord, the Lord says, I'm going to laugh at you now. When fear cometh, I'm going to laugh. You understand? When calamity is upon you, I'm going to mock you. Because why? Give me Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 1. Read verse, 20, read verse 22. Let's start there. Proverbs 1 verse 22. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 22. Mm-hmm. How long, you simple ones? You see that thing? Will you love simplicity? How long, how long, you simple ones? What does it mean to be simple? It means to be dumb. So the Lord is insulting us. How long, you stupid ones? How long, you dunderheads? That's what the Lord is saying in today's term, in today's vernacular. Dunderhead. Utom. That's what the Lord is saying. You see that? Read again. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 22. Read. How long, you simple ones? How long, you dumb dumb? He loves him. Let me keep it 100. How long, you dumb dumb? It's D -D -D. That's what they call it. Read again. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 22. Read. How long, you simple ones? Mm -hmm. Will ye love simplicity? Will you love simplicity? So you love to be dumb. That's what the Lord is saying. Read. And scorners delight in their scorning. Go ahead. And fools hate knowledge. You see what he's saying? And fools hate knowledge. The knowledge that we hate is what we read in Isaiah chapter 30. When it says, this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the laws of God. That's why it says, fools hate knowledge, meaning what? We dumb. We are so dumb, we hate the knowledge of the Lord. Because that's the knowledge we look at. That's the, the knowledge that the Most High God wants us to be after. You understand? Read. Read verse 24. Turn you at my reproof. You know what? Verse 23. I'm sorry. Read verse 23. Verse 23. Uh -huh. Turn you at my reproof. Turn you at my reproof. What you is the reproof of the Lord? The reproof of the Lord is this Bible. He says, return back to this Bible. That's the reproof. Return back to the correction. That's the reproof. Watch this. Give me Proverbs chapter 3, verse 11. Okay, Proverbs 3, verse 11. Proverbs 3, verse 11. Read. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord. Read. Neither be weary of his correction. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, despise not For the chastening the of the Lord. Hold on. Despise not. He says, don't hate the correction that is in this Bible. Because our people hate the correction of this Bible. When you correct our people, they say, don't judge me. You see, you see our people are so sensitive. There are people that are into their emotions. The most that God don't care about your emotions. Your emotions don't mean nothing if they don't line up with what is written in this Bible. So when you correct our people according to the scriptures, don't judge me. What is, so what is talking? Their emotions is what's speaking now. They are not using sense, okay? So the Lord is saying, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be wary of his correction. Meaning don't get tired of being corrected by what is written in the Bible. That's what he's saying. Read. For whom the Lord loveth, he corrected. Mm -hmm. Even as a Come father, on. the son in whom he delighted. You see that thing? He says, for whom the Lord loveth, he corrected. So if you don't get correction, guess what? You are hated. The Lord hates you. Because if correction comes out, you say, don't judge me. The Lord says, okay, put him to death here. He's going to catch a disease. Let him die in their sin. Let them catch a disease 
or something bad happened in their life, then they're going to remember me on that day. And when they do, I'm not going to hear nothing they say. You understand? So go back to, um, go back to Proverbs now, 1 verse 23 again. Proverbs, the one with 23. Come on. Turn you at my reproof. Mm -hmm. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. Right. I will make known my words unto you. Who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want the wisdom that's written in this book? Only a fool despises that. A fool will block their ears and say, la, 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 la. I don't want to hear nothing. And when trouble comes, they be crying to the Lord. Oh, Father, please hear me. Father, I mean, the Lord says, I'm not going to hear nothing you say now. Okay, read. Because I have called and ye have refused. Mm -hmm. Come on. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. He says, I have called and ye refused. How do our people refuse? No, says, bruh, the Bible says, thou shall not commit adultery. Thou shall not lie. Thou shall not bear false witness. He said, no, but I had to. No, but this. Mm -mm, no, it says, I have, he says, I have called and he refused. Meaning what? How does the Lord call you? The Lord call you by telling you what you must do, by using the prophets to bring the scriptures out. The law. Listen, this is what the Lord says you must do as it is written. Are you going to do it or not? Okay. So when you, when that's how the Lord calls. You refusing is you refusing correction. Because when you say don't judge me, you are, receive, you are refusing correction. You see that? Read. But, but ye have said it not all my counsel mm -hmm. and with none of my reproof. Because our people refuse. You know, that's, what, that's the same thing that we read in Isaiah. A children that will not hear the laws of God. Read. I also will laugh at your calamity. Mm. I will mock when your fear cometh. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, because you don't want to hearken, you, you are refusing my correction, my counsel, my chastening. He says, I also will laugh at your calamity. Right now, our people under calamity. There's the coronavirus, losing of jobs, losing of families, losing of houses, things of, things of their being repossessed and so forth and so on. You understand? So that's calamity. That is, that is, this is so calamity. Remember what we read in 2 Maccabees? He says, when so calamity came upon them, that's the calamity. Now so calamity has come upon us, the Lord says, I'm laughing at you now. You see, your pastor will never teach you this because he's a liar. You see that? Read that verse again, verse 26. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 26. Mm-hmm. I also will laugh at your calamity. Mm -hmm. I will mock when your fear cometh. I will mock when your fear cometh. Because right now people are fearful. They are scared. They are scared for their lives. They are scared for their livelihoods. They are scared for the roof over their heads. They are scared for the food on the table. They are scared because they might catch a disease. They don't know what's going to happen. The Lord says, I'm laughing at you. How does the Lord laugh at us? He brings forth judgment on us. That's how the Lord laughs. That's how the Lord mocks. He brings judgment so that you are in fear. So you can acknowledge that he's the God of Israel and you must repent and keep his laws. Read. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you. Read. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. Mm. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, when you fear cometh as desolation, right now the land is desolate. You understand? It's, it's things are, the conditions in the country, I'm just mentioning the country, but this thing is all around the world, there's a lot of uproars. You understand? Chaos. He says, when your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, like a storm, problems in your life. He says, when distress and anguish come upon you, guess what the Lord says he will do? He says, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. Then shall they seek me early, but they shall not find me. The Lord says, I'm going to hide my face from you. You're not going to see me. You're not going to understand nothing you are reading in this book. Okay, go ahead. For they, for that they hated knowledge 
and did not choose the fear of the Lord. You see what he's saying? He says, because they hated knowledge. It's always been the problem, the knowledge of the Most High. Give me Mike, Malachi 2 verse 7. Okay? Because they hated knowledge. Malachi 2 verse 7. Malachi chapter 2 verse 7. Mm. For the priest's lip should keep knowledge. And they should seek the law at his mouth. Read. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. You see that thing? So the knowledge that the Lord is saying we despised, we rejected, we hated is his laws. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. Meaning at the mouth of a priest, when you go before the priest, Guess what you're supposed to find at the mouth of the priest? The law. The priest is supposed to keep teach you the law. So that's why our people in the Christian church, they are so confused and lost. Why? Because the pastors don't teach the law. The pastors don't teach the commandments. The pastors don't teach, sister, do not be showing your cleavage. We don't want to see your cleavage. Cover up. Wear a modest dress. Why must we see the, your, the, the, your butt crack? Why must we see your, 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 your boobs out? Hmm? Why must we see your thighs out? Cover up, sister. Wear a long and beautiful dress. Put fringes on it. Pastors won't say that because they know if... Because one thing I've seen in the Christian church, the Christian church is filled with women and homosexual men. So, and the same women that are filling the Christian church, the black women, when they come to the streets when we teach, when we bring the scripture, says, you know the Bible says you mustn't wear pants, right? Oh, no, but these are women's pants. What are they doing? No, don't judge me. Jesus is in my heart. But if Jesus is in your heart, isn't it that you're supposed to know that a, a woman is not supposed to dress like a man? No, don't judge me. Mm -hmm. When fear cometh, when those yeast infection comes, when those, um, when those uh, STD comes, you understand? When those thrashes and those rashes come, the Lord says, mm, that's me mocking you right now. That's me laughing at you right now. That smells don't go away. The Lord says, I'm mocking at you now. I'm mocking you. But they still don't listen. No, it's my hormones. You know, it's the things that, mm -mm, sister, get off the pants, put on a dress. That said the Lord. They will not humble down and do it. But they still complain. You see that thing? Oh, don't dare touch the gay ones. Don't touch the homosexuals. The minute you correct a homosexual, they say, no, you are, you're homophobic. Listen, that means God is saying you cannot sleep with a man if you are a man. So, which means God is homophobic. Yes. If, if by your definition, I, I believe he is there. Because the law says don't do that. The scripture says repent. No, they don't want to do that. Because they are so deep into their lust, they won't let it go. You understand? They won't let it go. That's the reason why we are in the conditions that we're in. Because we hate, the, we hate correction. Now I'll go back to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 13 now, verse 12 again. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 12. Read. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, mm -hmm. because you despise this word, Read. and trust in oppression and perverseness, and stay thereon. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, because we despise this word, instead of trusting in the Most High God, Loving his word, loving his correction, knowing that when we keep his commandments, we're going to rule the earth and we're going to peace forever. We will, instead of doing that, we will rather trust in oppression, meaning we trust in being oppressed. We like it when we are crying because when we, as long as you are crying, as long as you are acting like the victim, you will never take responsibility. Never. You'll never do it because you'll always be pointing fingers somewhere else instead of examining yourself that like that like the scripture says you must do. He says, examine yourself, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own self. As a people, we don't want to do that. We don't want to take accountability. We don't want to take responsibility. It's always good when we are blaming others. But the reason why we are in this mess is because we rejected the Lord our God. You understand? And trust in oppression and perverseness, and we stay there on. That's how people don't want to leave politics. They don't want to do it. You can show them, listen, this book is our book. You can show them all the color scriptures. Aram is black. Jesus Christ is a black man. God is a black man. The Jews are black. We must keep the commandments. We are the Israelites. 
Listen, you can show them from beginning to end. As long as they are still hooked in that sin, they're not going to let it go. They're going to come up with all manner of excuses just so that they don't have to apply what is written. That's, that's the blueprint of our people. Okay? Watch this. Give me, go back to Jeremiah now, 17 verse 7. Let's go back there. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7. Read what you got. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7. Read. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, uh -huh. and whose hope the Lord is. You see that thing? The blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord. When we put the trust in the Most High God, the God of Israel, and none else, guess what? Our hope will be in the Lord. Right now, our people, their hope is not in the Lord. Their hope is... If I vote, this is the benefit I'm going to get. When the benefit doesn't come, I'm going to go to the streets and cry and destroy everybody. Like a, You ever seen a child throwing tantrums? That's our people today in the streets. Those are tantrums. Yes, give me that in Luke 17. Hmm. This topic is just getting deeper and deeper. Luke 17, watch this. This is what Christ said. Okay, no, Luke 7. Is it Luke 7? I believe that's it. Yeah, Luke 7, 31. Read it. Luke chapter 7, verse 31. Uh -huh. And the Lord said, Whereunto shall I liken the men of this generation? Mm -hmm. And to what are they like? You see, now Christ is asking the question. This is Christ speaking. He says, what shall I compare? That's the word liken. Liken means compare. What shall I compare the men of this generation? And what are they like? This generation 2021. What are the, what are the men of this generation like? Next verse. Watch this. They are like unto children Stop sitting right in the marketplace. Hold on. They are like unto what? They are like unto children. You see what God is saying? He says, the men of this generation, they behave like children. Because what do children do? Children like to throw tantrums. They like to get attention. That's what the Lord says about the men of this generation. So what are they doing today? Acting like children, like spoiled kids. They take to the streets when they don't get what they want. What you're seeing out there, those are tantrums. That's what Christ calls them, tantrums. They are throwing tantrums here. They are throwing all their toys out the court. You can't say nothing to them. You see what I'm saying? That's what Christ is saying about the men of this generation. They are weak, they are gay, emotional, effeminate. They want to be hugged. That's the men of this generation. So in that state of mind, how can you lead the nation? How can you lead your community? How can you set your woman in order? How can you set the children or You will not do it. You won't be able to do it. You understand? That's what the Lord is saying right here. He's speaking against the men of this generation. Read again verse 32. Luke chapter 7 verse 32. Read. They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace. Do you see that thing? Sitting in the marketplace. They are just sitting idle. Because idleness teaches much evil. Give me that in Ecclesiastes 33, verse 27. Because I want to show you the evil that you see now going on in the country is because of idleness. They've got too much time on their hands. Watch this. Sirach 33, verse 27. Ecclesiastes 33, verse 27. Read. Send him to labor, mm -hmm. that he be not idle. Read. For idleness teacheth much evil. You see that thing? Because idleness teacheth much evil. He's too idle. He's going to, evil is bound to come up. And that's the evil that you are seeing now all over the place. Okay? Because it's always nice when we're blaming the government for, for this stuff. Everything is on the government. No, no, no. Mm -mm. What we just read, we just discovered that we are the reason why we are in this mess. We rejected the Holy One of Israel. You understand? Go back to Luke now, 7 verse 32. Luke chapter 7, verse 32. Read. They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace mm -hmm. and calling one to another, saying, and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. Read. We have mourned to you, and ye have not wept. You see that thing? That's the mindset, because that's how children are. It says, We have piped unto you. It says, Calling one to another, because they're going around recruiting. Listen, we are not going to work. 
We are going to loot. We are going to destroy. If we see you going to work, we're going to what? We're going to beat you up. That's the mindset. If because you don't want to join us to do a toy, guess what? We're going to prevent you from going to work. Many people didn't go to work today. Why? Because of this. That's what we're reading here. Calling one to another and say, we have piped unto you and you have not danced. Okay. When I was in the open to any toy toy, you think you are better. That's the mind of the Negro. That's a, listen, that's a mind that is sick. Okay. It says, you have piped unto you and you have not danced. We have mourned to you and you have not wept. What, here, another one is, but mind you, nothing is happening. Hmm? We voted. We don't have jobs. We voted. We don't have no, we have no housing. We voted. Our children cannot go to school. We voted. We let's in the name of voting. Who told you to vote? The Lord told you to vote. The most said God of Israel, the God that delivered us out of Egypt. Hmm? So he's the one that told us to vote. Mm -mm, he said, keep my commandments. No, we chose something different. We said, no, we know better. We are too clever. We're going to do this. Now look what's happening now to us. Okay? But nobody wants to tell the truth because black people don't want to hear the truth about themselves. It's always good when we point in the fingers. You understand? Because the truth aggravates the mind of the Negro. When you speak the truth as it is written in the book, the black, black men, black women, they don't want to hear that. Watch this. Give me Sirach 32. Let me show you something. Sirach 32 verse 15. Hmm. Because I know somebody in this group, somebody in the class right now, they are offended about what's going out. Watch this. Sirach 32 verse 15. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 15. Read what you got. He that seeketh the law shall be filled therewith. Mm -hmm. But the hypocrite will be offended thereat. The hypocrite will be offended thereat. But if you are filled with the laws of God, you're going to have what? You're going to have the spirit of discernment. You're going to understand. You're going to be filled with wisdom, knowledge, and understand to understand what's coming out. You understand? But if you don't, if because you don't want to take responsibility, you don't want to acknowledge the fact that we are the problem and we don't want to acknowledge those problems and fix them, guess what? The hypocrite will be offended. That's why I'm saying somebody right now is offended right now. Read the verse again so they can be, be, they can be more offended by this. Read again. Ecclesiastes 32, verse 15. Read. He that seeketh the law shall be filled therewith. Mm -hmm. But the hypocrite will be offended thereat. But the hypocrite will be offended by what's coming out. Sirach 33 verse 2. Read it. Ecclesiastes 33 verse 2. Read. A wise man hateth not the law. A wise man will not hate what's coming out of this book. Because they understand this is correction. We must get ourselves together. You understand? Read. But he that is an hypocrite therein is as a ship in a storm. You see that thing? But the hypocrite is like a ship in a storm. They are very, they are double, they are not rooted and grounded. The hypocrite is double-minded. One minute they are here, one minute they are there. They are not rooted. They are not decisive. Read again, verse 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 2. Mm -hmm. A wise man hateth not the law. Read. But he that is an hypocrite therein is as a ship in a storm. Is as a ship in a storm. Go back to Jeremiah now, 17. Jeremiah 17, verse uh, 7 again. Jeremiah 17, verse 7. Read. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, mm -hmm. and whose hope the Lord is. Now watch this. Give me the book of Psalms. Okay. Give me Psalms 40, verse 4. Psalms chapter 40, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust and respecteth not the proud, no such as turn aside to lies. You see what he's saying? Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust. So if you're, you trust in the Lord with all your heart, guess what? The Lord says you are blessed. 
The Lord is going to bless you. The way you think is going to be bright. You're going to have a, you're going to have a sound mind. You understand? You're going to have you're going to have a sound mind to make sound judgments. You're going to be able to see the things the way that they are. You understand? That's what the Lord is saying right there. And respect it, not the proud. You know who the proud uh, the proud is? Our people that don't want to acknowledge that we are the Israelites and we done wrong. We must repent. That's the proud. Give me that in um, Sirach 10. Sirach chapter 10, verse 12. Read it. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 12. Mm -hmm. The beginning of pride is when one departs from God and his heart is turned away from his maker. You see that thing? Read it again, verse 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 12. Mm -hmm. The beginning of pride is when one departs from God and his heart is turned away from his maker. That's what the Lord, that's the proud. The proud depart from the Lord. How do you depart from the Lord? When you trust in men, like we read in Jeremiah 17, verse 5. Our people trust in men. So that's the proud. Because you think the way, your way is better than what is written in this Bible. Your mind is too clever for this book. You understand? That's the proud. The proud, when the scriptures come out, they're going to say, don't judge me. That's the proud. The proud don't want to be corrected. That's the proud. The proud, or the proud, they don't want to get corrected. Because some people will not say, no, I'm not going to do it. But they will agree, but they still don't do it. That's the proud as well. You see that? Go back to where was that? Psalms, chapter 40, verse 4 again. Psalms, chapter 40, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust and respecteth not the proud, mm -hmm. nor such as turn aside to lies. So the, 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 the man that maketh the Lord his trust, he keeps the Lord, the, the commandments of the Most High, you're not going to respect the proud. You're not going to care how the proud feel about them doing wrong, going against what is written. You're not going to entertain that. Why? Because as long as you don't want to do what this Bible is saying, as we all are fighting to do what is written, everything, we keep all the commandments, we don't want to hear you. We don't want to hear you because you don't have the same mindset as what the Lord wants. Okay? It says, no such as turn aside to lies. Politics is a lie. It's just a game. Okay, it's just a game. Understand that. None of it is real. It's just a game to confuse our people into madness. Okay, give me Psalms 91 verse 1. Psalms 91 verse 1. Read that. Psalms chapter 91 verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. You see what it's saying? It says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Let's see what the secret place of the Lord is. Give me Deuteronomy 29, 29. This is the secret place of the Most High. If you dwell in the secret place of the Most High, guess what? He says you shall abide under the shadow of the Most High. Let's see what is the secret place, which is the shadow of the Lord. Read it. Deuteronomy 29, 29. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. Mm -hmm. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. And those things, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever. That we may do all the words of this law. You see that thing? You see what the secret, th the secret place of the Lord is? Is the commandment, the words of this law. So if you keep the laws of God, guess what? That's the secret place of the Most High. The Lord will look after you. The Most High will protect you. The Most High God will bless you, will be, will be with you. You understand? The Lord will take care of us when we do that. That's the secret place. The secret place is keep the commandments, keep the law, apply what is written. Okay? Go back to Psalms now. 91 verse 1 again. Psalms chapter 91, verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You see that thing? So the shadow of the Almighty is the secret place which is the laws of God. Go ahead. 
I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. Mm -hmm. My God in him will I trust. You see that thing? My God in him will I trust. Listen, this is King David speaking here. So King David, the most said God, remember, when you read the book of Samuel, you understand? You read up first Samuel, second Samuel, you see how the Lord delivered the enemies under David. You understand? The enemies were put to flight. The enemies, their countries were seized. We destroyed the enemies under King David. Who delivered those enemies into King David's hands? The Lord did that thing. Because King David put his trust in the Lord. He was our forefather. You understand? Likewise, today we do the same thing. And guess what? All these nations that are oppressing us right now, guess what? All of them, they are going to be subdued. They hope to bow down to the king of Jacob. You understand? They're going to bow down. Every knee shall bow. All these nations are going to bow down and acknowledge the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ, on this earth. It's going to happen. Our job right now is to do what we can, which is what? Keep the commandments before the Lord returns. Get yourself together. Okay? That is what the Most High God is looking for. Okay? Watch this. Give me Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1. Read. My son, forget not my law, mm -hmm. but let thine heart keep my commandments. You see that thing? So remember now, we all we've been reading about the commandments, which our people hate and reject. They despise God's laws. Listen what King Solomon is saying. Read again. Verse 1. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1. Mm -hmm. My son, forget not my law. But let thine heart keep my commandments. You see, the law is the commandments. He says, don't forget my law. Let your heart, let your mind keep my commandments. Meaning what? Apply. What is written, you must apply it to your life. The Bible is about change. You understand? You use the Bible to change your life. You are a whoremonger, you sleep around. The Lord says, thou shalt not commit adultery. If you fear God that you don't want to be put to death, you don't want the Lord to plague you with a disease, Gonorrhea, syphilis. By the way, those are warning signs. Those are warning shots. The, the Lord, when he says, you know what? I'm tired of this. Now give him a disease that will keep on giving until he drops dead. Now you rebel me. Now you want to go to church. And even there, you still want to go there to worship white Jesus. You can't make this stuff up. You understand? Next verse. Go ahead. For length of days and long life and mm -hmm. peace shall they add to thee. You see what the law, the laws of God will do, which was commanded in verse 1? It says they're going to give you length of days and long life. Not only you're going to have length of days and long life, but you're going to have peace. You see that thing? Because there's no, there's, what's the use of you having a long life, but you don't have peace? The law says, not only am I going to give you length of days and a long life, but I'm going to add peace unto those long days and length, long, long uh, unto those unto your long life and the length of days. Is I'm gonna give you peace. Watch this, hold this, give me, give me Isaiah 26. Because the prophets, they always said this, they all spoke the same thing. You understand? Isaiah 26 verse three, read that. Isaiah 26 verse three. Mm -hmm. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace. Read. Whose mind is stayed on thee. Because he trusted in thee. You see what the Lord says he will do? He says he will keep you in perfect peace if your mind stay, is stayed on the Lord. If you meditate upon these laws. You know that you are dealing with pornography. Your job is to sit down and examine what is written and apply. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Okay, that's what the Bible says. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to discipline myself so I don't have to be what? So I don't have to be committing adultery with all the women that I see on the screen. You see that thing? The sisters as well. I'm dealing with fornication, adultery, lust. Guess what? Your job is to discipline yourself. You fast, you pray, you seek counsel, you apply what is written. So you don't have to commit adultery with all the men that you see on the screen. You see that thing? Read again. Verse 3. Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3. Come on. That would keep him in perfect peace. 
mm. whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. Because he trusted in thee, because you put your trust in the Lord. Your hope is in the Lord. You trust that if you apply, the Lord will help you to overcome the sin that you are in. But you have to put your trust in the Lord. You can't be double-minded on this. You understand? Go back to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 2 again. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 2. Mm -hmm. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. So the laws and the commandments will add unto you length of days, long life, and peace to your life. Read on. Verse 3. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So you see what the Lord is saying? He says, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Because why, do you, why is he saying mercy? He says, don't let mercy and truth forsake you. Watch this. Give me that in Titus 2 verse 11. Because when he says mercy, mercy is grace. He says, don't let grace forsake you. Because when you let grace forsake you, guess what you're not going to do? You're not going to do what we're about to read. Titus 2 verse 11. Read that. Titus 2 verse 11. Read. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Mm -hmm. Teaching us Come that on. denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. You see what grace is supposed to teach you? Grace is going to teach you to deny ungodliness. Meaning what? Grace is going to teach you thou shalt not commit adultery. That's the grace that the Lord is giving you. You are struggling with adultery. You are struggling with very false witness. You are struggling with deceit. You are struggling with envy and hatred. Guess what? That's what the grace is for. For you to know, to learn how to what? To get rid of that evil spirit. That's what grace is there for. Grace is the opportunity for you to work on yourself. Get rid of the evil spirit that's troubling you. You understand? So likewise, that's what grace is. That's why it says, let not mercy forsake you. Because that's the grace. When you let mercy forsake you, meaning what? That means you, don't, you are not using that opportunity that you've been given to deny ungodliness. You understand? To deny, to deny your worldly lusts, the things that you lust that are in the world. Give me that in 1 John 2 verse 16. Okay? 1 John 2 verse 16. It says worldly lusts. Watch this. 1 John chapter 2 verse 16. Mm-hmm. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. You see what he's saying? So that mercy, that grace that uh, King Solomon is talking about in Proverbs, guess what? It says it will teach you to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts. The lust of the flesh, what your flesh is lusting after, whether it be porn, whether it be lying, whether it be stealing, so on and so forth, and the lust of the eyes, what you see with your eyes. You understand? And the pride of life. The pride of life is what? Guess what? The world teaches you it's okay to celebrate Christmas. That's the, that's the pride of life. Because if you are in the world, the world will love you. You do the things of the world, the, the world will welcome you with both hands. Watch this. Because Christ, uh, the Apostle John, he spoke about this thing. Um, give me First John chapter 4, okay? First John chapter 4 and verse 4. Watch this. First John chapter 4 verse 4. Mm -hmm. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in us. Who is in us? Christ. Christ is in us. You understand? Greater is he. Give me that in Colossians 3. Greater is he that is in us. Who is in us? Christ. The black Messiah. Okay. Colossians 3 verse 11, I believe. Yes, read it. Colossians, Colossians 3 verse 11. Mm -hmm. 
where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. You see that thing? Christ is all and in all, in us. Christ is the one that is in us. In all the nation of Israel, Christ is in all of us. You understand? So go back to uh, where you was at, First John chapter 4, verse 4 again. First John chapter 4, verse 4. Mm. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Because Christ is not in the world. He is in, the, he is in us, the children of Israel. You understand? That's why it says love, not the world, because Christ is not in the world. Christ is not in the world. The world teaches Christmas. The world teaches you can be gay, you can be lesbian, you can be whatever gender you choose to be. You see that thing? That's what the world teaches. The world teaches 50-50. God teaches men over the woman, women over the children. That's what God teaches. God teaches don't celebrate Easter. Don't celebrate uh, um, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Valentine's Day. That's none, of, none of that is in the Bible. That's what the world teaches. That's why Christ is not in the world. And he commanded us not to love the world. That's what the world teaches. You understand? Read. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world. And the world heareth them. You see what he's saying? He says they are of the world. You see our brothers and sisters in the world, even your family members, your mothers, your fathers, your sisters that you grew up with. Listen, it says they are of the world. They care about the things that's going on in the world. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, which is not of the Father, but is of the world. Philosophies, Christianity, white Jesus, color doesn't matter, rainbow nation. That's, the, that's what the world teaches. That's not what the Bible teaches. You understand? That's why it says they are of the world. Because guess what? Because they are of the world, it says, therefore speak they of the world. They're going to teach you about the things in the world. You see what Caspar Nyovest say? You see what um, um, Philemon Masinga, you, did you see what he did? Like, that's what the people care about. They speak, of, they speak about the things of the world, yeah. You understand? That's what they care about. It says, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. The world will hear you. You celebrate Christmas, oh, all praises. Oh, great, great, great. Yeah, ka, ka. you celebrate birthdays? Mm -hmm. We have a birthday party, okay? There's a baby shower. Oh, I'm going there, okay? No, but Saturday is, is going down. Unali party, there's a slumber party. Friday night until Saturday. Listen, the world will hear you. They will entertain you because it's everything wrong. It's against what is, everything that I just mentioned is against what is written in the book. Okay? So guess what? They will hear you. Because you, you speak of the things of the world. Next verse. Watch this. We are of God. Mm -hmm. He that knoweth God heareth us. You see that thing? He that he knoweth that is... God. Hold on. He that, hear, he that knoweth God heareth us. How do you know God? First John 2. First John chapter 2 verse 3. Read that. He says, he that, he, he that knoweth God heareth us. If you say you know God, you're going to hear what the scriptures is saying. Watch what, watch what the Bible teaches us. How do you know God? Read it. First John 2 verse 3. Come on. First John chapter 2 verse 3. Mm -hmm. And hereby we do know that we know him. If we keep his commandments. If we what? If we keep his commandments. So if you say you know God, you must be keeping his commandments. That's how you know him. You see that thing and say, no, me, I have a personal relationship with Jesus, but the sister has got a mini scared. You got a personal relationship with Jesus, sister, with a mini scared? No, sister, you have a personal relationship with Satan. Okay? But that's what we hear in the Christian church. Me, I've got a personal relationship with Jesus. Jesus is in my heart, yeah. Jesus tells me what to do in the morning, what, what top I must put on, what makeup I must put on, what hairstyle I must wear. Mm -hmm. craziness hocus pocus okay read verse 3 again first john chapter 2 verse 3 Great. and hereby we do know 
they will come. If we keep his commandments, you see that thing. Hmm. Okay, brother Hey guy, you still with us? Brother Hey guy, are you still with us? Yes, sir. I'm still here, sir. Okay. 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 Read that again, verse three, for me. First John chapter two, verse three. Mm -hmm. And hereby we do know that we know Him, if we keep His commandments. We know that we know Christ if we keep His commandment. So the personal relationship, when you hear somebody say they have a personal relationship with Jesus, ask them, do they keep the commandments now? And you can just you by just looking at them, you will know they are lying. They are just speaking nonsense. They are not keeping nothing that's written in this book. Okay. Now go back to First John chapter four, verse six again. First John you know chapter what? four, verse six. Hmm. Finish that verse. Go back to First John two. Read verse four now. First John two, verse four. First John chapter two, verse four. Mm -hmm. He that saith, "I know him," and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar. Read. And the truth is not in him. Meaning what? They don't have a personal relationship with Jesus. Because if they did, they will apply verse 3. Because verse 4 says, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. You see that thing? That's how you know. Go back to First John now. 4 verse 6. Read that. First John chapter 4 verse 6. Mm -hmm. We are of God. Come on. He that knoweth God, heareth us. He that is not of God, heareth not us. You see that thing? Hereby it know says, we. Hold on. It says, he that is not of God, heareth not us. Because it doesn't matter how many scriptures you can read to them. They're not going to hear nothing you say. Because they, are, they, have a, they have a deep relationship with their lust. They have a deep relationship with the idol they worship. So whatever you bring out, they're not going to hear nothing. You, know, you understand? Their ears are blocked. The Lord, the Most High God has made their ears to be heavy that they don't hear nothing they, nothing the scriptures say because the Lord is still judging them. The Lord is still want them to feel the pain because of they are in the midst of sin and they're rebellious, they don't want to repent. So now he's saying, um, he that is not of God heareth not us. So those that are not of God, because if you're of God, you're going you're gonna to know God, you're going to hear what the scriptures say, you're going to apply it. If you don't hear what is written, so who are you listening to? Give me that in John, okay? Give me John 8. John chapter 8, verse 47. John chapter 8, verse 47. Mm -hmm. He that is of God, heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. He says, he that is of the Lord is going to hear God's word. What is God's word? The law. The laws of God, that's the word of God. You understand? So if you are of God, he says, he that is of God, they're going to hear the word of God, which is the laws, the commandments. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. So if you're not hearing, if you don't want to hear the word of the Lord, you don't want to apply it, who are you listening to? And who are you of? Jump up to verse 44. Let's see who are they of and who are they hearing. Read verse 44 now. John chapter 8 verse 44. Read. Ye are of your father the devil. Stop right there. Read that again. John chapter 8 verse 44. Read. Ye are of your father the devil. Ye are of your father the devil. You don't want to keep the commandments. You are of your father, the devil. Guess what? Who's speaking here? This is Christ speaking here. This is the black. Yes, not my Jesus. Yes, my Jesus. Read again. John chapter 8 verse 44. Read. Ye are of your father, the devil. Go ahead. And the lust of your father, ye you will do. Mm -hmm. He was a murderer from the beginning. Go ahead. And abode not in the truth. 
You see that? Because there is no truth in him. He abode not in the truth. What is the truth? Give me that in Psalms 119 verse 142. Let's see what the truth is. He says, because he abode not in the truth. Read that. Psalms 119 verse 142. Psalms chapter 119 verse 142. Mm -hmm. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And thy law is the truth. You see what the truth is? The law. And thy law is the truth. Thy law is the truth. Go back to where he was at now. John 8, verse 44. John chapter 8, verse 44. Mm -hmm. Ye are of your father the devil. Read. And the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and the mm -hmm. not in the truth. The law, read. Because... Because there is no truth in him. Mm -hmm. There is no law in him. Read. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. You see that thing? That's why in the Christian church, our people are being taught lies. In politics, our people are being taught lies. Just you be, just be chasing a carrot. In the Christian church, they teach you Jesus loves everyone. But when you look at your conditions, you live in them cuckoo. You live in the ghettos. Everything is bad on every side. You examine everything about your life. Everything is just bad. You look at your people, your nation. Everything is bad. But Jesus loves everyone. Contradictions here. What they say in the Christian church does not match the condition of our people. It doesn't match it. You understand? So you are living in la-la land. So that's why it says, and he says what? He's a liar and the father of it. That's talk about the white man. You understand? Because who was ruling during that time when Christ walked the earth? And who was Christ rebuking? Yeah. Who was he rebuking Christ? Read verse 33. John 8. John chapter 8 verse 33. Mm. Unto them, we be Abraham's seed. And were, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou? Ye shall be made free. So now, remember, he's, he's, dealing, he's talking to the Jews. Particularly, jump up to verse 13. Let's see which Jews he was rebuking here. Read verse 13. John chapter 8, verse 13. Come on. The Pharisees, therefore, said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself, the record is not true. He says he is speaking record of himself. Meaning what? He, he, Christ is exalting himself. Christ never did that. So he's saying he's, he is speaking the, the scribes and Pharisees. You understand? That's who the conversation is about because they didn't believe on Christ. The scribes and Pharisees. They didn't believe. So because I know as a people we leave it back then. No, no. Bring it to today. Who are the scribes and Pharisees today? That's your Creflo Dollar. That's your Pastor Chris. That your TD snakes, that your um, Bushiri, that your Mboro, those are your modern scribes and Pharisees of today. They don't believe on the Christ. They don't believe it. That's why they're teaching our people why Jesus and Christianity. Okay? So what Christ, because guess who, because who were they reporting to? The scribes and Pharisees. They were reporting to Rome. Rome was in power. You understand? Watch this. Give me John 11, verse 48, just to catch you up on the history. John 11, verse 48, because when he says, you are of your father, the devil, I said the white man, and now some of you are confused. No, less, I'm showing you who is he talking to. He's talking to the scribes and Pharisees. Who did the scribes and Pharisees report to? John 11, verse 48. Read it. Start at verse 47. John chapter 11, verse 47. Come on. Then gather the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, what do we for this man do as many miracles? So they had a council how to destroy Christ. Okay, come on. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. Mm -hmm. And the Romans and shall the come what? and take away. And the Romans. And the Romans. And the Romans shall what? And the Romans 
shall come and take away both our place and nation. You see what their focus was? Rome. They, were, they didn't care about the people. No, no. They cared about their pocket and their relationship they have with Rome. That's why if you notice these uh, pastors, they always meet these government officials. They are always meeting with the quote-unquote nobles of the world. They meet with presidents and all of that. Because that's what their, their allegiance is to that. Because the governments and all of that, their allegiance is to who? America, Europe, Babylon the Great, America. You understand? Their allegiance is to that. So that is who their father, Christ is referring to. Their father, the devil, is talking about Rome. Who's, who are the Romans? White people. So it was back then, so it is today. Same thing. You understand? That's why it says you are of your father, the devil. Because in the Christian church, they don't teach that Christ is black. They don't teach that Christ is from the tribe of Judah and the children of Israel is us. They don't teach that. They say you are Gentiles. But if you ask them, which Gentile am I? They'll never ask you. They'll never answer the question. Okay, I'm a Gentile. Which one? There's many Gentile nations in this Bible. Which one are you talking about? Which one, which one do I descend from? They will never point it to you in the Bible because they just teach lies. And they know the people won't ask the questions. They know that. You understand? Now, go back to Titus. Okay? Go back to Titus, chapter 2, verse 12. We're backtracking now. The reason why we went to all these scriptures is to explain Titus 2, verse 12. Worldly lusts. Okay? Titus, chapter 2, verse 12. The book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 12. Read. Teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, worldly lusts, we should live soberly. Worldly lusts, that's what we read in 1 John 2, 16. Worldly lusts. Go ahead. We should what? We should live soberly, uh -huh. righteously, and godly in this present world. In this present world, 2021, we must live godly, we must live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Meaning what? Keep the commandments, because that's what mercy that's what grace is there to teach you. Grace is not license for you to break the laws of God. No, grace is, is, is an opportunity for you to get yourself together. Apply the laws of God before the Lord returns and kills you. Okay, go back to Proverbs now. Chapter 3, verse 3. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. No, 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 Proverbs, Proverbs. Proverbs 3, verse 3, because that's where we were. Oh. Come on, stay focused. Proverbs 3, verse 3. Mm. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. You see what King Solomon said? He says, let not mercy. We just read what mercy is. Mercy is grace. Don't let grace forsake you because grace is supposed to teach you to deny ungodliness. The minute you leave that, that means you're not going to learn to deny. You're going to learn to accept. You're going to learn to indulge in your wickedness until you die in that sin. That's why he's saying, let not mercy and truth. What is the truth? The laws of God. According to Psalms 119 verse 142. That don't let mercy, meaning grace, that's supposed to teach you to deny ungodliness, and truth, the laws of God forsake you. You understand? Bind them upon thy neck because your neck, your neck, your head sits on top of your neck. Okay? Your head sits on top of your neck. So when you turn to the left, when you turn to the right, guess what's supposed to control your, the, your, the movement of your head? The laws of God. That's why it says bind them on your neck because when you turn your head, your neck is doing that. That's what he's going into here, okay? Write them upon the table of thine heart, meaning in your mind. The table of your heart is your forehead, in your mind. Okay, read. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. You see what he's saying? Then you're going to find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Meaning what? The people that are... You, you ever notice... I'll give an example of what I mean. Uh, give me Genesis 6. You know what? Before you get there. Um, yeah, give me Genesis. Give me Genesis 6 verse 8. I I'll use this example. 
instead. So forget what I, what, what I was about to say. I'm going to use this example. Give me that precept, Genesis 6, verse 8. This is about our forefather Noah. Okay, read that. Genesis chapter 6, verse 8. Mm -hmm. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. He found favor in the eyes of the Lord. What did Noah do? Next verse. Come on. These are the generations of Noah. Mm -hmm. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. Read. And Noah walked with God. That's why, the, that's why Noah found grace in the sight of God. He found favor in the sight of the Most High. It says what Noah was just, what Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. He was just. Give me that in um, um, Ezekiel 18, verse 5, I believe. It says Noah was a just man. Okay. Yes, Ezekiel 18, verse 5. Read that. Ezekiel 18, verse 5. Read. But if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right. You see that thing? But if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right. So if, if God is saying Noah was a just man, he did that which was lawful and right. He kept the commandments. That's why he was able to find favor in the sight of the Lord. And he was perfect in his generations. You understand? So when you hear in the church saying nobody's perfect, no, that's a lie. Because we just finished reading in Genesis. Go back to Genesis 6, verse 9. Genesis chapter 6, verse 9. Mm -hmm. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. So it says Noah was a just man, meaning what? He kept the laws of God. And he says he was perfect in his generation. Not only was Noah, um, not only did he walk with the Lord, but he was found perfect in the sight of the Lord. Watch this. Give me that in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 61. Because it says Noah was perfect. You understand? First Kings 861. Read that. First Kings chapter 8, verse 61. Mm -hmm. Let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God. But re to remember now, hold on. This is a commandment, what we're reading here. It says, let your heart be what? Let your heart, therefore, be perfect with the Lord our God. Let your heart, therefore, what is your heart? Your heart is your mind. Let your mind be perfect with the Lord our God. That's a commandment. Read. To walk in his statutes uh -huh. and to keep his commandments as at this day. You see that thing? That's what it means to be perfect. If you want to be perfect, you must keep the commandments. You understand? So does it mean that you're not going to make mistakes? No, it don't mean that. You make your mistake, you will learn from your mistakes. You become perfect. You overcome that thing. You move on to the next one. You understand? So that's why the Lord commanded this thing to us. He says, let your heart be perfect. How? You keep the commandments. You apply the laws of God to your life. Okay, watch this. Here's another example. Give me that in 2 Chronicles chapter 14. No, no. Chapter 15, verse 17. This is our forefather, King Asa. He was a righteous king. L listen to what the Lord says about him. Second Chronicles 15, verse 17. Read that. Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 18. No, no, verse 17. Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 17. Mm -hmm. But the high places were not taken away out of Israel. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was perfect all his days. You see that thing? He says the heart of Asa was perfect all his days. So guess what? He kept the commandments. That's why his mind was perfect. That's why it says the heart. Remember, it says, let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God. So our forefather, King Asa, his heart was perfect all his days. He kept the laws. So with Noah. Noah found favor in the sight of the Lord. Why? Because Noah was a just man. And he was perfect, and he walked with the Lord. 
Matthew 5 verse 48. Because Christ commanded us to do the same thing. Matthew chapter 5 verse 48. Read that. Matthew chapter 5 verse 48. Mm. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Remember, this is Christ speaking because Okay, I've got a red letter edition. So it's written in red here. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. So this is not a misprint. Okay? Christ wasn't, wasn't, he, he, he wasn't uh, in some kind of a trance. No, no, no. He said it out of his own mouth. He says, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. So can Christ say this thing and it's not possible to do? No. That's why the class is said that the name of the class is trust in the Lord because as a people, we don't trust in the Lord. We say that we do, we claim that we do, but when trouble comes, it shows whether you do or not. Are you going to hold on to the Lord or you're going to say to hell with this Bible, I'm going to do whatever I want. You see that thing? Watch this. Hmm. Go back to Genesis 6 verse 9 again. Genesis chapter 6 verse 9. Mm. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. Noah walked with God. You understand? He walked with the Lord. Whatever the Lord commanded Noah to do, he did it. The perfect, Noah is the perfect example. Because in the time of Noah, guess what? There were, nobody has ever seen rain before during the time of Noah. Nobody has seen rain. So Noah preached the gospel like we are doing now when we go to the seas to teach. Noah taught the gospel for 100 years. You understand? And building the ark at the same time. He was teaching and building the ark. For 100 years he taught, listen, there's a great flood that's coming. The people didn't believe Noah what he said. When the flood came, everybody was surprised. Guess what happened to those people? They all dropped dead. They all drowned. So today, we go to the seas, we teach the people, listen, the most high God is going to bring hell on this earth. Judgment is coming. You understand? It's not going to be water. Mm -mm, it's going to be fire. That's why the nations are building nuclear weapons. You understand? They are new building, they've got nuclear programs. One nuclear missile is capable of wiping out the whole of Jovic. Just one. One nuclear warhead can wipe out the whole of Jovic. The only thing that will be left will be just a, like, like a, a big hold. That's how powerful the nuclear weapons are today now. These nations are building. Because that's what's coming. So who builds a weapon like that that can wipe out the whole of Jovic? That's not a toy. It's not for demons. Mm -mm. It's for war. That's why they call it a nuclear warhead. Is created so that it can go boom. World War Three, it's coming. The people don't believe it, by the way. Okay, they don't believe it. They don't believe it. So Noah is the perfect candidate. Okay, so it is today. All right, go back to Proverbs now, chapter three, verse four. Proverbs three, verse four. Read. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. So what happened was we gave an example of Noah finding what? Finding favor in the sight of God. You understand? But it also saying you're going to find favor with, in good understanding in the sight of God and, and man. Give me Proverbs 16 real quick. Okay? I'll touch it. Proverbs 16 verse 7. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 7. Mm -hmm. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. You see that thing? It says, when a man's ways please the Lord, he says, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. So if your ways please the Lord, guess what? Even those that hate you, they're going to be at peace with you. Why? Because you, you finding, you keeping the commandments, you're going to find favor in the sight of God and with men. 
You see that? Go back to Proverbs now. Three. Okay, verse five now. Watch this. Proverbs 3, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Read verse 5 again. Proverbs 3, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart Come on. and lean not unto thine own understanding. He says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. This is one thing that our people struggle with. You understand? They struggle with trusting in the Lord with all their mind. You trust in the Lord, but you still, you still want Zuma to win. You trust in the Lord, but you still want Ramaphosa to pass that bill so you can get that tender because you know what? Mm. You see what I'm saying? You are double-minded. So that's why one foot in, one foot out. The Lord don't want that. Either you are 100% in or you are 100% out. You can't be in the middle. Because if you are in the middle, the Lord will split you in half. Okay? Read that again, verse 5. Proverbs 3, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Read. And lean not unto thine own understanding. Come on. In all thy ways, it's him, mm. and he shall direct thy paths. So now watch this. He says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, with all your heart. Everything about yourself, you must trust in the Lord. Watch this. Give me the book of First Kings chapter 18, verse 21. Because this, was, this has always been the problem with Israel. You understand? That's why you see our people today, they are so confused. Because we meet a lot of people on the streets. You understand? We meet a lot of people on the streets. They hear the word of God and they make it seem like they're hearing what is coming out. Oh man, wow, the Israelites are black. The Jews are black. They are excited. But as soon as they leave, they go back to the vomit. You understand? They go back to their old being nigger again. They go back to be that whole manga. They go back to being that whole, the whole that they are. They go back to the Christian church, worshiping white Jesus. After everything that we just read out, Christ is black, keep the commandments. They won't do it. They will agree while they are there. But as soon as they leave, they go back to they both go back to the vomit. Watch this. Because of this. First Kings 18, 21. Read it. First Kings chapter 18, verse 21. Mm -hmm. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, No, no. First Kings 18. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. I'm sorry. Read verse 21 again. First Kings chapter 18, verse 21. Mm -hmm. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long hold ye between two opinions? You see what I'm saying? Now Elijah is now putting the people on blast now. He's correcting them. He's rebuking them. He says, How long hold ye between two opinions? Why are you so double-minded, you Israelites? Black men and black women, you are double-minded. Read. If the Lord be God, follow him. You see what he's saying? Now he's giving them, listen, you make it, you make your decision now. If the Lord be the law, if the Lord be God, if he is the God of Israel, the true living God, follow the Mosai. He's saying, apply the commandments. Read. But if Baal, then follow the him. Devil, he says, if you now worship the devil, go ahead. But if Baal, then follow him. Mm -hmm. And the people answered him, not a word. Because they was ashamed. They was ashamed. Because he said, listen, if you want to continue to follow Baal, the devil, then follow him. So here you have our people, you teach that Christ is black. You see that thing? But on Sunday, they still go back to the Christian church, worshiping white Jesus. So do they believe this Bible? They don't believe it. They don't believe what is written in this book. Don't entertain them. Keep it moving. You understand? Don't even give them an hour to listen to nothing they have to say. On Sunday, they, they go back, they go to the, listen, Sabbath, we're on the streets, which is the day that the Lord ordained. Not Sunday, Saturday, the seventh day of the week. Guess what? The next day, the people will still go to the Christian church. After hearing that Christ is black, you're not supposed to be in those churches worshiping white Jesus. They, they don't believe it. They still go there. That's what Elijah was saying to them. He said, listen, if you want to follow Baal, follow him. 
follow him to your destruction and your death and destruction. Nobody going to cry for you. You understand? But if you want to follow the most high God, this is the program. Keep the commandments. Abide under the shadow of the almighty, which is his laws. Go back to Proverbs now. 3, verse 5. Proverbs 3 verse 5. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. He says, don't lean on your own understanding because our own understanding is what? Our own understanding is television. Our own understanding is politics. Our own understanding is uh, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. That's our own understanding. You understand? Because everything that we know in the world Everything we know is what we see on TV, what we see on social media. And if you take away all these social media platforms, black people have no opinion. Let me say that again in case I started. If you take away TV, you take away social media platforms, your Instagram, your Twitter, your Facebook, and you take them all away, black people have no opinion. You understand? That's why the Lord is saying, don't trust in your own understanding. Don't lean on your own understanding. Excuse me. Don't lean upon your own understanding. You understand? Watch this. Give me Second Ezra, okay? Chapter 14, verse 34. Second Ezra in the Apocrypha. Okay, I know we've got some new people online. So uh, uh, hopefully the brothers have talked to you how to, to go to uh, Google Play or Apple iStore to download the 1611 King James Version Bible with the Apocrypha. Okay, you're going to find these books that we're about to read. Second Esther, chapter 14, verse, 30, uh, verse 34. Read that. Second Esther, chapter 14, verse 34. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding and reform obtain mercy. Okay, read, read again. You are... Uh, is your conversation is choppy. Read verse 34 again. Second Ezra chapter 14, verse 34. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if so be that ye will subdue your own understanding ye, and reform your heart, ye shall be kept alive, and after death ye shall obtain mercy. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, Therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding. That's why it says, lean not upon your own understanding. Don't lean on your own understanding. You must subdue, meaning let it go. Everything that you know, you must forget about it. Everything that you've been taught, you must let it go. You must be like a newborn baby, like Christ says in John 3, verse 3. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom. Meaning you're not going to be able to be in the kingdom that's coming upon this earth. You must let go of everything that you know. Subdue your own understanding. Because our own understanding, like I mentioned, is television. You understand? Is social media platforms. Black people don't pick up a book and read. No. Let alone the Bible. The greatest book on the planet Earth. They don't want to touch it. Even when they go to church, they don't read the Bible. They just sit there just looking pretty. Okay? So the Lord is saying, subdue your own understanding and reform your heart. Meaning change your thinking. The way you think. The things that are in your mind, let them go. Pass them out with the word of God. Apply the commandments. You understand? Transform your thinking. That's what the Lord is saying. He says, then once you do that, he says, ye shall be kept alive. He says, keep my commandments and live. Okay? Keep my commandments and live. That's what we're reading here. And after death, ye shall obtain mercy. After death. Because guess what? Hmm. You die. When you keep the commandments, the old man is put to death. That old woman, that whorish woman that you used to be, they must be put to death. That whorish man, that whoremongering man you used to be, he must be put to death. That thieving brother, that thieving sister, that lying spirit you used to have, you must get rid of that demon. Okay? After death, he shall obtain mercy. That's some heavy stuff right there. You understand? Go back to Proverbs now. 3 verse 5 again. Proverbs 3, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord is all thine heart, and lead not unto thine own understanding. So let me show you what our forefathers did in the past. Give me that in Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 21. 
Okay? He says, don't lean on your own understanding. Subdue your own understanding instead. You must subdue it. You must let it go. Okay? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 21. Read that. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 21. Come on. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, when he was a dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. He was leaning. He says he was leaning upon the top of his staff. A staff is a what? Is a stick. What is, what would they all, you know, when somebody get, grow, gets older, you understand your grannies, your grandpas, they be walking around with a stick. That's a staff. What are they using it for? They use it for support. You understand? The staff is used for support. So that's why it says, don't lean on your own understanding. You must lean on the Bible because that's your support. That's the staff. The Bible is the staff that is you use for support. You understand? So what we're reading in Hebrews, this is a metaphor for what we're reading here in Proverbs 3 verse 5. Okay? Watch this. Give me, go back, Proverbs 3, verse 5 again. I'm almost done. We're almost done. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Mm. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Go ahead. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. He says, in all thy ways, in all your ways, you must acknowledge the Lord. Give praise to the Most High, and he shall direct thy paths. The Lord is going to lead you into the ways of righteousness. You understand? He's going to make sure that you walk upright. He's going to help you to make decisions according to what is written. Next verse. Come on. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Yeah, that's it right there. He says, be not wise in thine own eyes. You see, as a people, we are wise in our own eyes because we have not subdued our own understanding. We have not repented. We are still walking like Negroes. You understand? Like duckies and kafirs as they call us. No, we are not none of those people. We are the Israelites. You understand? We are the Jews. We are the biblical Jews. So he's saying, read verse 5 and 7 together. Okay, watch how this comes together. Read 5 and 7 together. Proverbs 3 verse 5. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord with thine own... Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Come on. Verse 7. Eyes in thine own eyes depart from evil. Okay. You were you are, you are in the matrix. Read 5 and 7 again together. I can hear you. Read, read it again. Read verse 5 and 7 together. Again. Proverbs 3 verse 5. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Verse 7. Come on. Verse 7. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. So verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Verse 7 says, Be not wise in thine own eyes. So when you, when you don't trust in the Lord with, with all your heart and you lean upon your own understanding, you trust in your own eyes. You see that thing? Watch this. Give me Job 10 verse 4. Give me the book of Job. Okay, he says, don't trust in your own eyes. Job chapter 10, verse 4. Watch this. Job 10, verse 4. Read it. Job chapter 10, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Hast thou eyes of flesh? Or seest thou as, as man seeth? Read it again, verse 4. Job chapter 10 verse 4. Mm -hmm. Hast thou eyes of flesh? 
or seest thou as men see it? You see what he's asking? He says, hast thou eyes of flesh? Guess what? The eyes of flesh is your own eyes. Your own fleshly eyes, meaning what? Your sinful eyes. Remember what we read in 1 John? He says, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. Because you use your eyes to lust after things that are against the laws of God. Now he says, has thou eyes of flesh, meaning sinful, sinful eyes. You understand? Lustful eyes. Or seest thou as men seeth, meaning, meaning sinful men, they, they see with fleshly eyes. They don't, they don't have their spiritual eyes opened. They don't see the things that we are seeing as we read in this Bible. You understand? They can't bring the Bible real to the people. The pastors don't, don't know how to do that because they are looking at this Bible with fleshly eyes and they teach the people with the fleshly eyes that they've got. So they have no understanding what the Bible is saying because they trust in their own eyes. Not in the eyes of the Lord, but in their own eyes because they have not been born again. They are not keeping the commandments, which is what it means to be born again. Okay? So give me Isaiah 29 now, verse 18. Isaiah 29, verse 18. They've got the eyes of flesh. Okay? You know what? Give me Isaiah 29, verse 10. Let's start there first. Read that. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 10. Read. For the Lord had poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep. The what? The spirit of deep sleep. That's what the Lord has done to our people. The pastors, the so-called leaders, the political leaders and all of the presidents and all that, they are blind. They have no idea what's going on. Read that again, verse 10. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 10. Read. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep. Our people are spiritually asleep. Spiritually, they are sleeping. They are, listen, they are in deep sleep. And Christianity and politics is busy just rocking them to sleep. Yeah, Every day, Christianity is a lullaby. Politics is a lullaby, just rocking our people to sleep. Okay? Entertainment, rocking our people back to sleep. Go ahead. And have closed your eyes. And have closed the your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers. Has he what? Keep, finish it. The seers hath he covered. So now he's saying, in, a, in his close your eyes. Now they've got eyes of flesh. So they don't see with spiritual eyes. They've got eyes of flesh. That's why you ask the pastor, pastor, why are we at the people as a people at the bottom? Why are we so impoverished? What's wrong with us? Why do we live like this? You know, you must pray now. You must, you're not praying enough. You must tithe. That's what they'll tell. They'll make it melodious even. They're, but they're not going to give you the real reason why we're at the bottom. Go and ask the politicians. They're not going to tell you. You know what they're going to tell you? No, we need economic. We need an economic plan. No, we need a, a comrade. You know we need an economic plan. We need to correct the incorrect corrector. You, that's what they'll tell you. They, listen, they're going to be correcting the incorrect corrector because he made an incorrect correction. That's what they're going to... Listen, they're not going to give you nothing substantial. Mm -mm. They're not going to just, just going to give you, they're going to speak with big terms where you have to open the dictionary to understand what the comrade is saying. But they're not really saying anything. Read verse 10 again. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 10. Read. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep. Read. And hath closed your eyes. Mm -hmm. The prophets and your rulers, the seers hath he covered. That's what the Lord has done. The most High God has covered them. They don't see what's going on. Has closed their eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers have he covered. That's what the Lord has done because they don't want to keep the commandments. You see that thing? Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Watch this. Isaiah 9, verse 16. I'm sorry. Isaiah 9, 16. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 16. Read. For the leaders of this people caused them to err, mm -hmm. and they that are led of them are destroyed. That's why right now our people are destroyed, because they lack the knowledge of the Lord. They lack the commandments, because in the commandments tells you who you are, what happened to you, what are you supposed to do to come out of this condition. So now the so-called leaders of our people, it says what? 
For the leaders of these people cause them to err. They cause our people to sin. They rock our people to sleep with what? With politics and religion and democracy. That crazy demon called democracy. You understand? They that are led of them are destroyed. You see that? That's why people are destroyed. By these, who are, by these leaders who are wicked men. They don't want to keep the commandments. They hate law and order. You've been, I've been in politics before. The amount of fornication and adultery that gets committed in, in listen, you, it, my God, man, in the church is the same thing. The pastor is sleeping with half the women in the congregation. They sleep with one another. No marriage. It's just a whole house. That's the reality of the situation. Nobody wants to talk about it, by the way. The, but the prophets are back. We're going to put it on blast. Isaiah 29, verse 18. I'm almost done. Isaiah 29, verse 18. Read that. Isaiah 29, verse 18. Come on. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the Lord. No, 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 no. He doesn't say that. Read that again. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 18. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book. You see that thing? And the, the, words, of, the words of the book is this Bible. It says, in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book. You, we are the deaf today. You understand? Now we are able to hear what this Bible is really saying. Read. And the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity mm -hmm. and out of darkness. You see that thing? The eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity. Meaning what? Obscur what is obscurity? Politics. Because politics has put a huge cloud over our people's eyes. Religion has put a huge, a huge cloud on our people's eyes. So our people now, their judgment is clouded. Why? Because of what? These idolatrous practices called Christianity and democracy, which is the same thing. Okay? But this is on this day, on, in these last days, that's why now we are waking up to who we are. We understand that we are the children of Israel and we are supposed to rule this earth. And the reason why we, we are at the bottom, we broke the laws of God. Now we must return back to the Father and keep his commandments and rule the earth as the Lord has commanded us to do. You see that thing? Now, go back to Proverbs again. Chapter 3, verse 7. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Don't be wise in your own eyes because why? If you are wise in your own eyes, guess what? You're going to see with the eyes of flesh. The Lord is not going to open your spiritual eyes to see the things that are going on, to use the Bible to explain the things that are going on and to prepare yourself for the second coming. So as a nation, that's what we're doing right now. This is nation building time. We're building the nation of Israel now. The people that have been so destroyed, the Lord is waking us up. But in order for that to happen, we must put our trust in the Lord 100%. Don't be double-minded, okay? Give me that in Proverbs 12, verse 15. Proverbs, chapter 12, verse 15. Proverbs 12, verse 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, mm -hmm. but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. You see that thing? The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. That's why the Lord says, be not wise in your own eyes. Because you are a fool when you do that. But a wise man, guess what they will do? They will, they will listen to counsel. They will hearken means listen to counsel. Give me Proverbs 28, 26. Proverbs 28, verse 26. Read. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. Mm -hmm. But whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. You see what he's saying? It's plain. If you trust in your own eye, in your own heart, which is your mind, he says, you are a fool, the Lord is saying. Because the commandment says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. That's the command. You understand? Psalms 115 verse 11. Psalms chapter 115 verse 11. Mm -hmm. Ye that fear the Lord, Trust in the Lord. He is, the, he is their help and their shield. Verse 11, once again. Psalm 115, verse 11. Mm -hmm. He that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. 
You see that thing? He says, he that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. If you fear the Lord, you're going to trust in him. Okay? It says, he is their help and their shield. If you, if you fear God, you're going to trust in him. But if you don't fear God, you're going to trust in man. And guess what's going to happen? You're going to die trusting man. You're going to be toy toy trusting man. You're going to be frustrated trusting man. You see that thing? You're going to act like a fool trusting man. Read that again, verse 11. Proverbs. Oh, Psalms, no, Psalms. chapter 115, verse 11. Come on. Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. He is their help and their shield. Okay, give me Psalms 40, verse 1. Psalms chapter 40, verse 1. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. You see that thing? So when we wait upon the Lord, and as we are waiting, give me that in Revelation 14, verse 12. This is what it means to wait on the Lord. Patiently wait on the Lord. You don't just sit there and wait. You must be doing something while you are waiting for the Lord to deliver you, to deliver all of us, by the way. Okay? Because what we teach is about all of us as a nation. You understand? It's not I am saved because we're not saved yet. We're still in slavery. When the Lord returns, that's when we're going to be saved or delivered from the hands of our enemies. Okay? Revelation 14 verse 12. Read that. Revelation chapter 14 verse 12. Mm -hmm. And I looked and behold. No, 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 no. no. Revelation 14 verse 12. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. You see that thing? It says, here is the patience of the saints. We are the saints. So when, he, when David says, I waited patiently for the Lord, what are we supposed to do while we are patiently waiting? You see what that part it says? Read that part again. Here are they that what? Here are they that keep the commandments of God uh -huh. and the faith of Jesus. So while you are patiently waiting, you must be keeping the commandments in the faith of Christ. You see that thing? That's what it means to patiently wait. You don't wait and sit there and do nothing. No, you keep the commandments and the faith of Christ. Go back to Psalms 40 verse 1. Psalms chapter 40 verse 1. I waited patiently for the Lord mm -hmm. and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. You see that thing? Read on. He brought me up also out of the horrible pit, out of the murray clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. You see what is when you wait on the Lord, because the reason why people fall out of this truth, they go back into the world. You understand? Is because they fail in patience. You understand? Because I was talking to a brother, um, you understand, on, on Sunday, I believe, one of the brothers, and he said something. He said, did, we were talking about Titus. He said, did Titus fail in patience? Yes, because while he was patiently waiting, he wasn't getting himself together. You understand? He wasn't keeping the commandments of the Most High in the faith of Christ. That's why he failed in patience. Okay? So he was supposed to, while he's waiting, he was supposed to be keeping the commandments of the Mo, the Mosai and fighting the good fight. You understand? Read that again, verse 2. Psalm chapter 40, verse 2. Mm -hmm. He brought me up also out of the horrible pit, out of the murray clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. You see what he's saying right there? He says, he brought me out of a horrible pit. Right now, as a people, we are in a horrible pit. Poverty. You understand? Diseases. Ghettos. No job. Poor housing. Poor education. Poor medical facilities. You understand? Poor education. Poor everything. We're at the bottom of society. Listen, we're at the lowest of the low. That's a horrible pit. Because in Christianity... If they have to read this, they're going to say, yeah, you, you are in a horrible pit. You can't pay your bills. You are in a horrible pit. My husband don't like me. You are in a... Listen, no, he's not talking about that. 
the horrible pit is talking about as a nation, we are at the bottom. That's the horrible pit. You understand? In Christianity, they don't teach, they don't teach nation building. No. They don't teach, so you can't, you don't know how to relate your your nation as a as a people. You don't know how to use this Bible to see the problems in our community and how to fix them. Okay. It says, and set my feet upon a rock. Hmm. When you wait upon the Lord, you're gonna, you, if the Lord will bring you out of the horrible pit as a nation, we're gonna come out of slavery. And he will set our feet upon a rock. Watch this, because the rock is our king. Give me that in First Corinthians, okay, 10. First Corinthians chapter 10. First Corinthians chapter 10 and verse four. This is the rock that the Lord says, I'm gonna set you upon a rock. This is what he's talking about. Read that. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse four. Come on. And did all drink the same spiritual drink mm -hmm. for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. That rock was Christ. He says he's gonna set us upon a rock. Who's that rock? The rock is Christ. Because that's when the Lord returns. He's going to get us out of this horrible pit. You understand? And we're going to what? We're going to be forever with him in the kingdom. We're going to be sitting side by side with him while he's ruling in his father's kingdom on earth. We're going to be joint heirs with him. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Romans 8. Then we're going to close it. Romans chapter 8, verse 16. Romans chapter 8, verse 16. Read. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit mm -hmm. that we are the children of God. You see that thing? It says the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Let me just explain this a little bit because this is confused our people in the Christian church. The reason why I keep talking about the Christian church is because Christianity is the most, the most accessible, the most popular drug on the market is Christianity, and our people are high on that thing. Every Sunday, they are going to get a fix, okay? So it says, the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit. What is the spirit? Give me that in Romans, same chapter, same book, Romans 7 verse 12. No, no, Romans 7 verse 14. Read that. Romans chapter 7 verse 14. Read. For we know that the law is spiritual. The law is spiritual. So when it says the spirit bear it witness with our spirit meaning the laws of god they bear witness with our spirit our own spirit what does that mean the laws of god is able to tell us who we are you see that thing god's commandment is able to tell us who we are the it says the spirit bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of god for instance as an example right give me Deuteronomy 28 real quick Deuteronomy 28 and verse 33. Read that. Deuteronomy 28 verse 33. Come on. The fruits of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up mm -hmm. and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. So this, this judgment right here is called colonization today. It says the fruit of our land. What is the fruit of our land? That's the, that's the mineral resources that are upon this continent. Gold, diamond, platinum, uranium. You understand? These are made oil. Okay, these are the these are the fruit of our lands, the mineral resources. It says, Shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up? So, which nation came over here on the continent to eat up the fruit of our lands? The Dutch, the British, the Portuguese, the Germans, you understand, the Americans, the Chinese, the Arabs. That's what they are doing right now. We are, they, are, they, are, they have colonized us. They are eating. They are, taking, they are taking the fruit of our land in broad daylight in our faces. And we have no power to stop them. That's what's going on right now. You understand? This is colonization. It says, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. How are we oppressed? We have everything, but yet we have nothing. The country, our countries are left desolate. We are impoverished, but yet we produce the gold. We produce the oil. 
We produce the diamonds, but yet we are poor. Colonization, because we've been colonized. Okay, so they are eating everything of ours. Go back to I go back to Romans now, chapter eight, verse sixteen. I was there. I'm just giving an example of what it means when it says the spirit bears witness with our spirit. Because once we read the curses, wait a minute, that's talking about us. That's how we know we are the Israelites. Read it, Romans eight, verse sixteen. Romans chapter eight, verse sixteen. The spirit itself that we are the children of God. You see that thing? That's how the spirit bears witness with our spirit. Is the, the laws of God bring to our remembrance who we are when we read the cases of Deuteronomy 28. I just read one of them. Next verse. Go ahead. Verse 17. And if children, then is, is of God and joint is with Christ. Mm -hmm. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. You see what he's saying? So when the Lord returns, when he brings us out of this horrible pit, we're going to be joint heirs with him. We're going to be ruling with him in the kingdom. He's going to be on the top, and we're going to be ruling together with him. That's what he's saying right here. All we have to do is to do what? Is to hold on, keep the commandments, and wait for the Lord to return. You understand? Matthew 19, 28. Matthew 19, 29. No, no, 28. Read that. Matthew chapter 19, verse 29. Mm -hmm. And everyone that has forsaken houses. No, no. No, Matthew 19, 28, 28. Read the verse above it. Matthew chapter 19, verse 28. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the, re in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory, Ye also shall sit upon the 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. You see what he's saying? He says, when you return, when I return, you're going to be you're gonna be joint heirs with me, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. That's the same thing we read in Romans 8.17. Okay, I'm going to end the class right here. All praise to the Most High. Let's uh, break bread. 1 Corinthians 11.23. In the honor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, for dying, for laying his life down for us. All right. Read that. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Most High hand for the class. All praise to the Most High. All praises.